So, we are now live. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get the stream started, and it looks like I actually got it started just in time. So, we're going to be going ahead and kicking off this Forspoken demo uh, live playthrough. This is pretty much going to be 100% on the demo. I'll be doing a live stream for this every day at this time for the next week or so. Maybe a little bit longer, depending on how long it takes for us to completely finish everything in the demo. Um, so before getting into it a bit, this is going to show kind of what the settings are that I'm going to have running. Uh, I'll walk through controls. I'm going to kind of do everything in a sense on this demo. So first, let's go ahead and just start a new game so that we can kind of go directly from the beginning. So of course this is a sample, um, that's pretty much what it's saying right now. And I'm going to go quiet for a sec so that we can see the starting sequence. Frey Holland, daydreamer, cat lover, New Yorker. On a fateful evening, her life changed drastically when she was mysteriously transported to the beautiful, treacherous land of Athia. Frey arrives with a magical, sentient bracelet inexplicably wrapped around her arm, then discovers she can cast powerful spells and use magic to swiftly traverse the sprawling landscapes. The last remnants of Athia's populace soon look to Frey as their only hope for confronting the Tantas, once benevolent matriarchs who now rule as maddened and evil sorceresses. Reluctant to help, but desperate to find a way back home, Frey sets off on a journey through this strange and dangerous land. So, to kind of talk about what we just saw there, pretty much what we're going to probably have, we're going to wind up with about four worlds that she'll be journeying between, or these four different lands, along with the area in between, which is actually where this demo is placed, is in the middle of the map, as far as I'm aware. Um, we will not do the tutorial part, there's really no point in going through it. I'm going to give you all kind of a tutorial for anyone who's watching as to how pretty much Frey moves and how best to play her. The, the tutorial would just kind of be extra and it's going to slow us down, honestly. Um, so we're going to actually skip that part. <clears throat> and in terms of the controls and settings, we will go ahead and do a check on that. And that way, you all kind of get to see how I'm going to set this up. So first, the difficulty is going to be on hard. And since I've been playing the demo as much as I have, I'm actually going to make it a bit harder for myself. I have been playing it here on default for damage received. I did some testing last night just to see. This is going to make it fun for everybody watching too, because I promise I'm going to wind up dying a few times. But um, I moved it up to significantly increase for damage received. So that means I can't take any L's or it's going to get rough. Um, in terms of stamina recovery speed, we're not going to have it at fast. You could literally have this, and that's going to kind of make it. It's it would improve the gameplay for someone who is kind of getting used to the game for sure. But um, a good way to handicap yourself is going to be to put it at default. And I'm sure once the full game comes out, we'll even be able to lower the stamina recovery speed even more. As far as the rest of these things on here, I'm going to leave these pretty much the same. Uh, aim assist is off for mine by default aim assist will be on when you start the game unless they change things from the demo but I'm going to have it off for my playthrough as well uh, all the controls here I'm going to leave the same for display settings I'm running this on performance focused I need that so that we can actually have the higher frame rate. Otherwise, probably the input is really going to be kind of laggy, not to mention what you'll be seeing from the stream won't look very good either because it won't be at 60 frames per second. So we're going to make sure that we stay on performance focus. I'm not going to turn this one on, which is 120 hertz display mode. Uh, if we did that, that one would actually lower the input lag even further, which would be super cool. But at the same time, I'm not sure if it'll output correctly for the stream, so I'm just not going to risk it. And I turned off motion blur. I don't want people getting headaches. <laughs> at least I know from my experience when I was playing Horizon Forbidden West, motion blur did nothing for me except make my eyes hurt. Um, okay, sound settings, leaving those the same. Not really much of a point in changing anything there. 
And in terms of accessibility settings, I don't change any of the things in the world settings, but for the battle settings, I do switch over. Uh, normally, the default would be magic parkour sprinting, which is where you hold circle. Um, and it, the spell will kind of activate once every time you hold it. I will not be doing that. I'll have it as toggle. So when I activate, it just stays activated until I turn it off. And we'll, we'll see very quickly why I'm doing that. And that is about it. So we'll go ahead and press circle. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and start off the demo. So due to the settings that I just activated, this is going to be much more difficult than normal to play through the demo. Uh, we have five main objectives that we'll be working on. And then in addition to that, of course, because this is a 100% run, we're going to get every single one of these purple dotted chests that you see here. We're going to go to every single location on the map. And then in addition to that, we need to fill out all of the spells. And we also need to do all of their advanced or spellcraft challenges. So there will be a few that uh, we're going to have to take a very specific way to get these done. So that'll be where it probably, probably will add a few hours to this live stream, certainly. But so right now, we're just going to kind of go about trying to get rid of some of the objectives first. We'll be done with the objectives long before we get into filling out her entire spellcraft uh, system and everything else. You also have her gear as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few changes right now. So two of the things that are important for her gear settings, you have a cloak and a necklace. The cloak and the necklace both give you stat upgrades. I'm going to make some changes later to her gear. But the first thing we're going to do right now, we can just kind of look at some of the different cloaks that we have. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on, which is gracious. And if you look at those numbers up at the top, they're changing on top left. I'm sure you'll see why I'm going to put Gracious on. It'll have more health and more defense, and it will also raise her magic the highest. Especially with the difficulty settings I'm using right now, anything that will boost her character is a necessity. You also have necklaces that will have different abilities, and we'll get into combining or, conf uh, or configuring those abilities later. But I'm going to pick this one, which is the Tesoro de Athia. And the reason why we're going to pick that is so that, again, highest stats that we can possibly have for right now. Now, for her nails, she can actually change the color of her nails and her nails give her different abilities, which is definitely pretty cool. So um, we're going to go ahead and get into these and see which ones are best. So this is Slay, which improves her own magic, her own spell damage. You have Clutch, which improves all spell damage. You have the Blue Flash, which is one that I actually tend to use a lot, which allows attack spells to charge more quickly, and um, all damage is reduced by 5%. In this instance, we will be applying Blue Flash. You have Ignite, which will increase her, uh, like, Silas spell damage, which is her fire magic. We'll get into the different representative names and characters later, but just keep it simple, Sila is fire. Frey is Earth. Um, then you have the Frey spell damage increase here for, uh, this is just called three, apparently, is the name of the, the nail. And that also adds debuffs from her spells for a longer period of time. You have Dig Deep, which is also really useful because it improves your surge magic uh, recharge rate and it lowers the damage you take. So this would be another one we could use, but we're not going to right now. And then Aftershock which increases all spell damage by 2%, and it generates a shockwave from killer blows. We're going to be using Aftershock on this hand. And what's really cool is whatever nail design that you change here, whether it's left or right hand, when you go to the resources section, which is where she'll hold out her right hand, as you can see, the design that is actually shown here on her right hand is the one that is holding the resources in this in this area here, which is also to me just a really, really cool touch. These are some of the uh, resources that we're starting out with. So um, yeah, a bunch of stuff that we'll get into later, but all of it's useful for crafting. I'm not gonna dive too far into the archive right now. Uh, we'll definitely be dealing with that, of course, when, when I go ahead and do the full game. For the demo, just know that, of course, in her equipment, it details the different cloaks and everything and kind of pretty much says what they are. Same thing for the necklaces. 
And then, of course, this is the Tesoro de Athia that we're wearing. This is the gracious one that we're going to use for the cloak. And then also it details the different nail designs, why they're there, and the history behind them. So, it also explains resources as well, like the hearing draw, the firewood, and all of the different grass types and everything, and what you look for. So it's actually a good idea to come in here once if for those who are going to be interested in playing the full game and see what these different grass types look like, because that way when you scan them in the environment, it'll be easier for you to recognize which ones are which. All right, uh, this is the tutorial section that you can go through in addition to obviously the visual one we could have done. This will tell you a lot of the other things that she can do in terms of her abilities and stuff. But again, I'm going to show all of that. So not super important there. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, we're going to go ahead and get this map open and see where we are. We're right here. This is going to be the first point that we go to is this treasure chest. And also I'll kind of get the chance to show y'all how the combat works. Oh, one more thing before I move. This is pretty cool. Let's say I zoom in further on the app, on the map. Look at this. So you actually have a situation where now you have a full 3D map where, and when I, when you set all of the different markers, any points on the map, they respond in real time to that. It's just, it's really, really cool. Um, and we'll get to also show a bit of how that works even further with this Belfry that we'll get to eventually also. So let's go ahead and get into this. People say that the traversal is difficult. All I'm doing here, first of all, is holding circle initially for the basic traversal. Now, whenever you see me do this, this motion here, this is known as a shimmy. And so I am pressing X whenever she hits the ground to get that shimmy to work. Then we have something known as a zip. Zip is activated by utilizing square. This is zip, which is where it activates this kind of pretty much a fire. Honestly, it's like a fire web. Think, think Spider-Man pretty much. And it pulls you to the next location. Now, we're going to go ahead and do something really quickly for her abilities. We are going to go and buy our first ability or use our mana to get our first ability. And that is going to be what's known as the drag and drop. That is so that we can pull enemies to us very quickly. But in addition to that, it automatically switches our magic type in combat. So we're going to go ahead and get that loaded. And now what will happen is if I press L1, R1 and square, that happens. That said, it seems as if there is an enemy somewhere that I do not yet know about. Oh, here we go. So these guys are weak to, and we'll go ahead and look at them really quickly. This is her scan technique where you can actually see what their weaknesses are. So this is something called a Verona, pretty much a crazy bird. They're weak to phrase magic, which is earth magic. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to earth magic by deploying that stone. That's her quick switch, L1, R1, circle. I'm gonna put down disperse, which are a set of flowers that shoot seeds. Now, the thing is, I need to continuously be moving when these birds are coming at me, otherwise I will die. It's just that simple. They swoop and they'll do lots of damage. What I am doing is a basic shot right now. Also, see how I ran out of stamina? That's really important to pay attention to. If you use the circle move too many times without shimmying or paying attention to your positioning, you will run out of stamina. Now that is burst shot. That's what that little clump is that's throwing kind of damage right there. But I would suggest in a situation like this, you switch to scatter shot because Scattershot allows you to put damage down much faster and you have much better control over the shots that are fired. There's no one around. Did you do something to annoy them all? Now, this is a cool way to use Zip to prevent from crashing into the ground. If you do not sh stop yourself from falling when it's a certain distance, you will wind up losing stamina in the process because, of course, she's going to need to use stamina to, to pretty much brace that fall. 
And if I haven't already mentioned it, stamina, if I use any, pretty much any movement spell, in that lower left-hand corner, stamina are those little diamonds, the little yellow diamonds that are at the bottom. We're going to figure out a way later to be able to replenish her stamina, but for now, we'll kind of have to deal with it as it is. It won't replenish on its own except for when you kind of stop and wait. But we're again, we're going to fix that. So this is Ether that I'm picking up, and that gives you mana. And then you can use that to go back into this area and unlock new abilities. Now, something cool I want to show off with that chest up there. I'm going to run into this chest and then press triangle. And she does this really cool parkour move to kick the, triangle, the, to kick the chest open. Under normal circumstances, this is just flashy. But there will be instances in boss battles where there will be chests that are guarded by bosses, and it may be good to utilize that move to get in and out really quickly. Also, when we scan an area, that, for example, that little diamond over there is a chest. How far now? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go down there really quickly, deal with the enemies that we see down here. You can actually scan them even without having to get a visual, but those are break zombies. We're going to kill them first. And then we'll go get that chest. So we'll put down that same dispersal right there. Then that opens that enemy up. Well, he died too quick. Died too quickly. But um, I was going to show what's known as a killer blow. So we'll get into that when I get an enemy that survives for a tiny bit longer. Now this is actually going to be an interesting challenge. I'm going to see if we can traverse this. Reason being, we don't have her next traversal ability. But it looks as if I was able to pull it off, even without the extra jump ability. So that worked out well. So we'll go ahead, open this chest. This is Noctite, so that's another crafting um, material. We'll deal with that later. And this is the Tanta statue. Or Tanta, I believe, is actually the better pronunciation. And I'm going to be quiet for a sec. Is that a cat? So our goal Even here is going... Break. I assume that is no ordinary cat. Our goal is going to be to sneak up on that cat. That cat is one of Tanta's familiars. So we're going to go ahead and there's a way to kind of a best way to go about this. One, scan the area. Make sure that you know that the cat's right over there. Two, and I've had to realize this, that gate, or should I say not that gate, but that wall kind of, of um, barricades down there pretty much indicates where you can and can't go. If I go too far to the right, the cat will disappear. So I have to actually go pretty much straight from here down. This will hurt, but it's not gonna kill her. Or I could do this and zip to the wall, which is what we're gonna do in this instance so that we don't actually lose any stamina. Now I'm going to slowly approach. You cannot really jog here. You have to walk because the second that the cat notices you, it will run if you jog over. Once you get close enough, you're going to get the option to crouch. And my plan from here is you just slowly approach like this. Eventually, you will probably get an exclamation point from the cat noticing. We'll see what happens right there. So I'm going to wait. I have to wait until that exclamation point disappears. I normally give it one or two more seconds more. And from here, I'm just going to do one step at a time. One step at a time. And there we go. Oh, 
Oh, it likes me. Very good, very good. So here we see again, the cat is one of Tonta's familiars. Right now, we're not seeing any benefits, really, for having a familiar. But as far as I'm aware, in the full game, there will be very specific things that will be granted to you from being able to befriend the familiars. Something but about that cat felt different, don't you think? Funny you mention that. I was just thinking I detected a hint of Tonta magic. Huh. Could they be connected somehow? Wonder where it went. But for now, it's pretty much just a benefit to be able to get the, the Tanta familiar. All right, so there's going to be a pretty interesting battle over here. Hopefully, I do not die on this one. These are Varanus, which these things can poison you. And then, more specifically, they have that thing in the back. I guess a uh, Hylonomus is that that's probably why it's pronounced and this guy is pretty much a very strong heavily mutated enemy um, normally you're actually supposed to go and do a few other things before we come back to get this one but we're going to yes. go ahead and take him on now um, we're going to use scatter shot not burst shot on this one I've been noticed I'm going to go ahead and put down disperse ahead of time dodge that the whole idea right now is to just get some damage down. I'm going to pin him and then try and get a bit more damage on that big enemy. We'll go ahead, continue to attack this one over here. You have to be careful with them because they come low to the ground. So in thick grass, it would be very difficult to be able to see them. I'm going to use Tendril to get them off of me a bit. Again, we're focusing on getting rid of the small ones first. So that's one of them out of the way. I don't like the look of this. We're going to try and get this second one out of the way before we focus on one that's coming toward us over here. All right. Killer blow. We're going to use Tendril. Yep. We'll swatch to bur um, swap to burst shot, and so see again. That's that whole running out of stamina bit. We're gonna get we're gonna get a chance to fix that later, but for now we have to keep that in mind. That is just a poison attack. As long as we're out of range, we're safe. Looks like I mistimed my tendril. That's my bad. And there we go. First of all, wait, so though, first we'll go ahead, grab out. this item. Oh, it looks like also that monster dropped something. So we'll see what type of cluster. Okay, it's a lead and bloom. So that's a rare item. So that's awesome. And now we'll go over here and open this chest. Looks like some kind of lock. So, with these puzzles, all you're really trying to do is connect them to create a straight line of some sort. You got to get everything connected. That's the real goal here. Um, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and start moving these into position. So, this one clearly is in such a way where you have to move one of these pieces to be able to connect it to the other set, right? So, in that case, if we can, we just slide this section together and then we get this one to connect at the top and we can go ahead and activate the unlock Oof, that was kind of tough let's see what do we got here and so you get these old coins to be honest i don't know yet what the true value is of the old coins i believe they're a crafting resource but i'm not entirely certain as to how they're used um all capacity so eventually we'll figure it out all right, so it looks like there's an item down there somewhere, and then we have a few enemies from here. Also, let's check our map so that we know exactly what we're looking at right now. We've done the Tanta Monument. 
I'm a completionist, so we're definitely going to go ahead and look and see what's in this area. There may be ether over here. And then we'll take care of the enemies in here. Then we'll come back and scope out this area. Eventually, what we'll have to do is kind of divide the map in half and just go one way and then the other. But we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take it in stride, right? So that looks like that is ether. So I'm just going to zip to this location, go ahead and grab that. And as you can see, she has some level of mobility without magic. But again, point for point, her main her main abilities, you need the magic. So right now, we don't have enough to do Rage Slice times two. I'm going to go ahead and switch magic. You can switch yep. magic back and forth just by doing the D-pad here. Yep. I'm going to switch to Rage my Slice level one, which gives her... <gasps> pretty much some hands, as they say, in terms of combat ability, right? Yeah. Then I'm going to use some of her other abilities. The one that I just used there was charge. We're going to attack this creature, which will scan it so that everyone knows what it is. It's a Kalano. Pretty much this is a harpy creature. Um, can shoot its feathers, attack you with voice techniques, stuff like that. So it's weak to fire, so we're just going to lay into it a bit here, and we're going to sidestep when we use certain techniques. You can actually do this sidestep motion by just selecting or moving um, your left trigger. And there we go. We're clear there. Only about 50 XP. That's really not a lot, but we got that done. There are some other chests up this way, but instead of going there first, we're going to go over here. Now I'm gonna show another option that you can do with zipping. So pretty much you can use the zip to attach to one of those stones and then use it to power yourself up to another location. So let's see what's over here. I see Kalano, Kalano, and then another Kalano. So there's three of them over here. So we'll go ahead. That was a dash stab, which you can use. And then we'll go ahead and use that slicing technique. Killer blow. Use charge to knock this one down. And then after that, this one, we'll use one of our bigger attacks so that's base level surge magic. It's not strong enough to honestly do a ton of damage at this point. I'm going to have to level her up more, but it can do a little something. And there we go. And we've leveled up. So now what I'm going to do with that level up is we're going to go ahead and unlock Rage Slice level no two. Around, that will allow us to be able to create a slightly larger um, attack radius when we actually use her palm strike. All right. Now let's go ahead and see what's around us. Again, we could go in that direction, but we're going to work our way over here now. So, zip to this location here. The enemies that we have right here are Teratornus. They are weak to earth magic. They shoot acid, pretty much, and they also attack you with, like, swooping attacks. So, we're going to immediately switch to Earth Magic. I am out of stamina at the moment. So, I'm going to slowly kind of let that revive a bit. There we go. We're going to put down Disperse. In a second. All right. I'm going to go ahead and give myself some health back using Leech. And, oh, looks like the plant decided to take care of it for us. That's awesome. This also gets to show how healing draught works. So it works. So for her healing items, all you have to do is press down on the D-pad. And there we go. We have a bit more health to work with. Now let's go ahead and scan, see what we can find. There's a chest up there.
and it looks like I couldn't reach that one easily. So we're going to go here, then there. Sometimes you have to find a good foothold. Okay, so now we have the spine stone. Let's look at the area. There's nothing down that way. So let's go over here really quickly. All right, we're going to go ahead and use that pulling motion to be able to switch abilities. Do the shockwave there. This looks like a big one. And then beat this enemy with rage slats. It's just up ahead. So there's our shore violet. That's another thing that we'll need to use later. And while we're here, we'll collect some of these items, which this, the bomb flax is used to make more of the, um, the healing draught. So that way we have healing items. I'm going to go ahead and prioritize going to this chest and not fighting the enemies up above. See, there's that shockwave again doing damage for us. That's why I wanted to use that ability specifically. Dodge that enemy as it was trying to attack us. And then we just use the sword. There's one. Oh, okay, never mind. There isn't another one. Cool. So we'll go ahead and pick up this ether. Then we'll go over here, open this chest, grab that ring stone, and then we grab this angle stone over here. Now we should be getting close to our first objective. Our first objective bad. is that lodge bad, over bad, there, bad, 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 bad. or I think it's called a refuge. You've been pining for something. So that's pretty much where we're going to go first, because that way we can start working on crafting. <laughs> And see, that is an example of that crash is where when she hits the ground like that, that uses one point of stamina. However, if I can get far enough up here, I can demo this. If she hits the ground from a very high height. Okay, that wasn't high enough. Uh, let me see if I can find one that's a bit higher then. Because I do want to show you all this so that you know ahead of time that this is just kind of one of those things. So I think this is high enough. So that almost took all of her stamina right there. A little bit further and we would have been totally tapped out. And if you get caught in a situation, of course, where an enemy can hit you under those circumstances, then you're going to take a lot of damage. Okay, now we found the first refuge. So that's objective one complete. Again, first thing first, we're just going to be focusing on completing the objectives and getting chests here and there. Then I'll start to really work through the true 100% part of it. Because for me, hey, 100... Hey, Did it tail us here? Oh, that's so sweet. Hey, little guy. For me, 100% means fully completing everything in the demo. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So first things first, we'll pick up this note that's been left behind. Uh, again, these are just basic resources uh, or information for the archive. Pick this up. Nugget. Some more healing draught. And then the angle stone. You can pet the familiar. Does that feel good? As far as I'm aware, there's no bonus for doing that, but you can do it. And now All we're right. going to come here let's and let's do a bit of crafting. So we have a materials pouch, we have a medicine pouch, but right now we don't have the required items to do anything here. We're going to first craft some more healing draught. Then let's get into the really fun part. So we're going to work on each of these pieces of equipment and kind of trick them out a little bit. So this is the one that we have currently equipped, right? 
let's go ahead and fix a few things here these are all the different improvements that you can make on a piece of gear and so of course what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and set this gear up to where it's way more beneficial for us when it comes to fighting we'll need to look at both things that we have equipped the necklace and the cloak look at the necklace first we have precision counters which electrocute enemies i personally don't use precision counters that much and on this difficulty level i would not be able to really suggest using them why because unless your timing is a1 it's better to dodge than to try and counter because if you don't land the counter properly you will probably instantly die so i'm not going to use the precision counter enhancements and stuff that we see here I'm going to give her slightly different abilities. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to focus on her spells. Let's see what we can find here that we, and we have to have the, the, the current um, items, the resources necessary to do any of these upgrades. That's also important. So we're going to do this one first, which is damage boosted when surge magic is not fully charged. And then let's see what i want to put on this one there's a few different ways i could handle this i could do the enemy numbers boost surge magic but i don't think i'm going to do that one i'm going to go with critical hits can boost attack and the reason being is that we're actually going to uh, give ourselves a bit of a benefit on the other item in correspondence with this so when we go back over to gracious i'm going to add over here that improved critical hit rate when HP is high. Put this one on. Then let's see what we're going to put on this last one. We could do auto heal. I'm thinking I'm going to do auto heal. Yeah, we're going to do auto heal. That's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and do that for whenever an enemy is defeated. That way that'll keep our health high. Oh, and um, so that it shows here. I think I, did I see a purple dot somewhere. Something that I hadn't shown yet. Oh, no. Nope. Not at all. Okay. So we're done here. Now let's go ahead and look at spellcraft challenges. Time to curl up with a good book. So when we come over here... This is how you can increase or power up your spells. This is pretty much how you're going to game change her abilities and her power levels. So let's go ahead and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to improve some of her movement techniques because those are the things that are going to keep us with enough stamina to not get hit. So this is one of the first ones we're going to accept is shimmy. The second one I think I want to go ahead and do is for us to do flow. And then we're going to do leap as well. We'll come back for zip and some of the others. Let's try practicing this technique. And so this is the thing that I think many people who played the demo missed. This is the most important part, in, in my honest opinion, of learning how to, to like use her character. If you do not do the spellcraft challenges, you will not learn how to use Frey's abilities properly. So you have to do these. So let's go ahead and just get into the shimmy part. Shimmying is very easy to do. You pretty much just literally go back and forth like that. We'll pick up that item while we're here. So this is all we're doing. All we're doing right now is just bouncing around and just filling up the amount that we need here. And the thing is, under normal circumstances, I would say, oh, we'll just skip this and go on to the next thing, but I promise we're going to want that stamina boost. We can integrate this, though, with a bit more of the fighting side of things. I'm going to do that now. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and see what's around us. We have some enemies coming in. I'm going to let them see me. And get mad. Because I kind of want them to actually attract some aggro. 
from the other enemies. We'll go ahead, switch to our earth magic. Put disperse down. Get rid of that first bird. The other birds are now coming in, right? So you gain something interesting that you have to take note of is that you actually gain your abilities, um, like your support abilities back, the more damage that you do to other, to other uh, enemies that you see on the field. So the more attacks you launch, the more quickly you gain your support abilities back. Also, it does take stamina to do killer blows, so you have to remember that as well. And so that triangle there is where we could have done a precision counter. But the problem is it's very difficult. It wouldn't have even done us really any good. And I don't have stamina yet to do the killer blow. So let's just put disperse down to give us kind of some time to get back on our feet. We're going to use tendril to get some health back. Use that to get rid of that enemy. And then we'll start chasing him down. Once my stamina charges up, awesome. There's still one more of them, and that should be that one done. Yep, cool. So let's go ahead and let's finish off Shimmy. Let's not get careless. And we're gonna see the difference that this is gonna make. Nice. So we're done with that challenge. And actually, let me give it a chance to make sure that it loads so that I can go in there and do the improvement. Here we go. So now we see that this purple diamond is lit up. We're just going to go ahead, hold X, upgrade it. And now Shimmy will restore our stamina. This is going to change the game at this point. Because that means that every time you use the flow, you are literally getting the stamina back that you just burned. All right, now we have the Angel Stone. Let's go ahead and focus on the next one. This one is evade attacks while using magic parkour. So this one pretty much means that unlike what I was doing before, where I was focused on taking the enemies down immediately. With this one, I kind of need to provoke them and then dance around the enemies in question. So the goal here is going to be to purposefully draw aggro and then have to dodge the attacks like that. There's nothing I can really do about that. That's a daze technique. What I did not realize is that it actually reduces her stamina, too, to use that one. Didn't know that. Get a bit of health off of that one as uh, that enemy as they come in. And again, we'll just need to keep our stamina high. I'm just going to play with these enemies. Slide under an attack. I think with that one, I'd have to press circle once. So I'm going to need to think about that so that I can take advantage of that one. But with this, with this attack, okay, we dodged that. Didn't count though, I guess. I have to do it exactly at the time of the attack. Okay, that's 16. We need a few more attacks dodged. Let me see if I can provoke them a bit.
And so what I'm doing too is I can get some of the climbing stuff done while also sitting there and doing the da the evading portion. Where you see that red flash on her body is from us getting that critical hit because the critical hit then powers her up to be able to deliver more attack damage down range. Oh, so see, that was me not paying attention. <laughs> Shouldn't have gotten hit by that. Uh, I'll use Tendril, Bleach, and then pay attention to this one. Once I've, what I've noticed is, and this is the one time where I would say the AI kind of falls short, but I'm sure they're going to increase the, uh, the attack rate of the enemies is that when you're not in big groups, the enemies don't attack as violently, or at least not the standard enemies. Because this is, of course, a standard style of enemy, right? The Kalano isn't the same as some of the other enemies that you'll meet later in the game. So they have this thing where basic enemies do different, different types of attacks. There we go. So now we can speed this one or increase this one. Now our stamina recovery rate will be higher. And the next one is going to be Leap that we're going to do, which we'll go ahead and work on that one in a second. And of course, I could use fire techniques to kill this one faster, but that's just me wanting to play around with them. All right. So let's go ahead and get in the Leap. So unfortunately, as you can see, Leap does not apply when you're doing Zip. So if you want Leap to work, or at least for us to be able to get it leveled up, then we're going to have to go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. Which means we'll pick this area right here, and we will climb it just through sheer traversal skill. So unfortunately, it's going to take a minute of us doing this. So we might as well go ahead and kind of also do some other things while we're at it. So this is that area on the map that we hadn't come to yet. I'll go ahead and come down here first. We'll grab Ether. We'll make sure that there's nothing in this direction. There isn't. So we'll go ahead and go back to way. traversal. We can open this chest immediately. Grab what's in there. Let's search this area. Grab the firewood. Indulge your little fantasy if you like. Just don't get yourself. I still haven't found a use for the firewood yet. And we can go ahead and kill these enemies. There are some enemies that do not replenish. That is important to remember. These enemies do. Yep. These guys will always come back. But there are some enemies that do not, so just keep that in mind. Yep. Watch out for the enemies here because they will try and gang up on you. Now that we have that ability, though, where we replenish our stamina, if need be, we can dodge no matter what. Just make sure you don't pause for too long on any one enemy. Well, do something. All right. I've gotten Disperse back. I'm going to go ahead and do this first, then apply Disperse to help me get rid of that last bird. Then I'll go ahead and lay down some suppressive fire. Okay. We can use burst shot to deal some damage to the remaining enemies. So this one's close to dying. That's why they have kind of like that um, 
that look like they're cracking. And so, yep, now that we've done that part, that in set of enemies done. That's about 232 X XP. Now, I know some people were saying that they feel some type of way about the XP grading system that it does on the side of the screen. I'll be real, you can play however you want, and I believe you will have no problem still managing to do quite well in terms of your combat. In my experience, it doesn't really rank combat skill. What it does is it just it just kind of wants to see whether you're utilizing other abilities and whether you know how to kind of play Frey quickly. All right, so let's go ahead and do that leap thing one more time. Now, this is one where you do need the other abilities. Also, I believe that the demo is kind of going to limit me in terms of how high I can climb here because you're not actually supposed to climb this area. But it's a good way to get a few extra feet um, for the climbing parameter here. And what I'm doing to stick to the wall like this is I'm holding circle. For those who don't know how to sit there and really make Frey stay in a specific location, that's how I'm doing that. Also, you can use the trees as well as parkour devices too. So that's something to be remembered. I'm gonna go ahead and go down and then do that same leaping motion again. Actually, I'll just go ahead and let myself come all the way down because I'm going to need more stamina before I can go back up again. Okay. So here's an area where we'll be able to find a base to rest. There we go. That gets us to about, what, 152. We'll do the same thing. What I may do is, so that we're not kind of repetitively doing this for too long, I'm probably going to go back to the refuge pick up more spell spellcraft challenges so let's really quickly go back to the refuge and this will demonstrate the speed of the fast travel it's literally instantaneous it's pretty much unbelievable how fast it is oh, so never let's seen go here before and we'll go ahead and for now we'll keep the spellcraft challenge on leap but we won't worry about it too much um let me see which one i kind of want to do for right now i think it's really important honestly for us to build up some of the power and speed for rage slice so we're going to accept this one and then we're going to accept rage slice level two Eventually, I will also speed up this one, which is Rush. And we'll also do Drag and Drop. Again, we're going to do them all at the end. But for now, we'll just focus on these. Okay. So in the process, let's go ahead and knock out another objective. Let's go ahead and do this one, which is Objective 2 which is right here at the bridge. We can go ahead and finish off these enemies first though, because we can also introduce another enemy form to you. That's a Boggart, which they're kind of like little hobbits. Um, so we're gonna take him down along with the deer here, because yes, the deer are aggressive. We're gonna switch to Rage Slice level two. It's going to make it a lot easier to put damage down on the deer. Die. So they're done. Now we need to see where that boggart is. And boggart is done. Nice. So safe. You won't be safe until we'll pick inside. up these items and then we'll go ahead and head over here. Now, we're actually about to fight another special creature over this way. 
I am actually going to go ahead and do a save really quickly because this may or may not go well. We're going to fight that thing, which is pretty much a, I guess you could say honestly, it's like a super deer. <laughs> um, Be ready to protect yeah. yourself. I will. So, Thank you. as we can see here from the scan, phrase magic, earth magic is totally useless. We're going to need to use fire. I'm going to try and use Rage Slice, Blast Slice, Arc Slice will be too slow. We'll demo it for something else, but not for this fight. And we only have three types of support magic. So this is going to be lovely. I don't think I have enough magic yet nope, to buy anything else. So let's just give it a shot. Okay, so hitting while it's using that attack, complete bad idea. Did not realize it would be that much of a throwback, but hey. All right, we'll put down Disperse. We'll use Tendril to get a little bit of health back. As we can see, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things, so that probably is not gonna get it. We'll bind it, and then let me heal back normally. All right, we'll just go ahead and switch back over to fire, and then I'm going to try and use Conflagration to throw it off. Fusillade to give us a bit more power. Look out. The next one's going to hurt. I know that's all it does. reason why I'm using this is because that allows me to get Leech back faster. And then Leech can give us a little bit more health. Ooh, still got hit by the Aftershock on that. And apparently I got taken down. So this is why I said this is going to be interesting to try this one out. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's go ahead and give it one more shot. This time I'm going to stick pretty much to Rage Slice and Blast Slice and keep distance. Well, do something. I don't like the look of this. So that AOE is really, really powerful. So see, when I get that red circle, that pretty much means that any hit from there is basically instant death. That's really what that means, because Cuff is not able to help you at that point. So it doesn't really matter how much health you have. If you're within a certain range of that attack, then you're pretty much dead. We'll go ahead and elect a Crucible, so that that way we can fight from in here with Rage Slice. Next one's gonna hurt! I hope that's all it does. And here we're using Sidestep to be able to prevent us from taking most of the damage up front. And there we go. Took it down. All right. Well, that was definitely uh, well, well earned. down. Let's go ahead and do that bridge mission. Uh. 
we'll go ahead and pick up the items that are around here first. I don't think there's any firewood that I can pick up at this point. I should have the maximum. Before we leave from this spot, this is pretty cool though too. So you can actually scan your surroundings using this gigantic watchtower and pick the different areas you want to go to. So at least from my experience, that's that to me was kind of a pretty cool thing to see. So let's go ahead and handle this bridge mission. We'll have to get rid of those birds first though. We'll go ahead and put down the flowers so that that'll help us yeah. out. All right, that's done. Looks like the coast is clear. They didn't drop anything. We'll pick up the shore violets right now. And let's do the bridge mission. So first off, we have to get rid of the enemies that are already here. These are Tanta's familiars. They use homing arrows that can actually find find us from pretty much any location. That's exactly why they're giving us this tutorial regarding magic invasion. At this point, any hit from them will pretty much kill me, guaranteed. So I kind of cannot afford to get hit like basic arrows, it's fine, but any of the more powerful abilities, yeah, it'll, it'll be pretty bad, honestly. Okay, so they're all done. Oh, that was my bad. <laughs> I did not get the distancing on that right. Bunch of them are coming in now. We'll go ahead and erect a crucible. And see, I'm dealing with a bunch of dudes right now. Alright, we're gonna switch to Tendril. Take a bit of health back there. We're gonna put down Disperse. Oh, actually Disperse I guess already is in okay. place somewhere. That's it. And those are the minions now. Now I have to fight that. So this is just going to be a lot of fun. Thankfully, she doesn't attack too often, at least in my experience anyway. But as we can see here, my attacks do almost no damage to her. And those attacks are unblockable when she does that red cleanse. So she's ooh. so she's resistant to that. So yeah, <laughs> even so she's resistant to Silas's magic, even though that's the one I'm using. So we gotta wait until we break her guard down some. Otherwise, we won't even be able to do anything to her. The beautiful thing is that you can use the bridge to hide here if you need to. So see, now she's vulnerable. Ooh, okay, and I think we can get in there now to deal some damage to her. Let's use Blast Slice. And we'll use Arc Slice in a second. 
Ah, uh, that range is wrong. I'm gonna just get back for now, cause if I enter now, then she's gonna wind up doing. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That's an unblockable. Get out of there. Dodge that. Nope. Dodge that. And that should be it. Awesome. Frey, so that increased all me, magic Frey? powers by one. <laughs> Cuff is now having to recharge. But that's our second objective done. Okay. And... Now that we're done with our second objective, we can add some of these other abilities uh, to our arsenal right now. We weren't worry, won't worry too much about that. I can go ahead and upgrade this spellcraft challenge. So that'll power up Rage Slice, which will make this ability a lot more effective for us in the future. And we should be close to finishing, yep, this spellcraft challenge too. Surprisingly quick on the uptake, you know. So let's go ahead. First of all, we'll use Leech to give us back a bit more health. We'll switch back to Rage Slice. And if I can off, find an enemy that's Not close by, out. I do see one. But unfortunately, they're grass related, so it, I won't really be able to get the right benefit. But it doesn't matter. We'll use um, Disperse. All right. And there we go. Vultures are now done. Did you do something to annoy them all? What didn't Grab I Grab the do? ether that was up here. And unlock this chest. Okay. This area is a good area to go into, and we can actually finish off a few more enemies there so let's go ahead and check this spot out too it's another section that you can just pretty much test your gameplay skills on let's go check that out always worth a look just in case grab that chest first go in here and as we can see there are enemies down below these are all pretty me. much Tanta re uh, representatives, so we'll go ahead like. and Just use Rage Slice killed. starting off. Or we could actually use Blast Slice, it doesn't really matter. I think we're close to something. Get out of the way. So that's one of the abilities that she can use with the Blast Slice. If you activate it while she's in midair, it turns into pretty much a jump and dash technique like that. Yep. Whoop, let me dodge that ability. Not bad if I do say so myself. So we can go ahead and enhance Rage Slice level two. which is going to start to even the playing field for us.
All right, let me not let my health get too low. Back over this okay. way. All right, and we're clear. There's a lot of stuff in this area that we can use to our advantage. Go ahead and pick up some things. Shore Violet. Let's see here. There's going to be another chest over this way. Okay, that's the feather that we'll need to be able to increase our resource pouch. So that's awesome as well. I don't think there's much else here except for just this stuff that we can kind of pick up. We have some bomb flax, two healing draughts. So what I was trying to do there, I didn't really catch right. That's my fault. That's not Frey's fault. That's my fault. Um, I was trying to catch the side of the wall properly, but I kind of ma messed up the aim a little bit. Okay, so that should be everything in here. Let's go ahead and go to our next objective. Uh, we can go ahead and do the dive into the Rosewood Fount. We can probably do all the objectives, honestly, in in just this one stream yeah i'd say we can make the other objectives in just this one stream except maybe the croc we'll have to see about the croc i don't know um but let's go ahead and get into the next one that's the fount here so we'll place a marker right there we can exit through this section over here. And so, if you know how to do the fall and drop, you can literally just do it like that, and that way you don't take any real damage. And just wait until she gets close enough and then zip into another area. We'll get rid of these enemies quickly enough. I'll use Shimmy to be able to get back some of my stamina. Do not let yourself get caught by the poison gas. Oof. We'll go ahead and follow that up. Use a kill, killing blow to be able to get our, um, our health back. And the thing is, at least you can until your stamina replenishes. You can just keep moving around. So that's always the good thing there. All right. Take him down. And then it's just this one. There we go. Are we there yet? Long now. So that noise that we've been hearing is the bount, which is this area right here. And we're going to go ahead and get like into this fount. This fount, all you have to do is just jump into it. And as a result, you're going to get abilities from it.
So now we've learned a new traversal spell. All right, so that's objective three. And we're going to go ahead and speed run the other two objectives. And then what we'll do is we'll focus on doing more of the, uh, the challenges and leveling out the rest of her abilities in the next one. Because that's going to be a process that's going to take a while. So let's go ahead and go to the Monument of Strength now. That's all the way over this way, 2,464 feet away. But what we may be able to do, depending on where we've been as of right now, I don't know, we may have not been to this area yet. No, we're just going to have to foot it. Uh, and it's not that difficult to do that. So let's take a look at how to quickly move from spot to spot we're gonna dodge the super powerful crops for right now we will take down any enemies that just so happen to be in our path but we're going straight for that objective otherwise so see that gives me just enough stamina to of course refill that circle we're free of any and let's go ahead and Here's get these. Those way. are shore violets. The shore violets are always super popular. Like, well, not popular, but easy to find common resources. So, mm. all right, more Tonta's minions. How far now? Okay, they're done. More enemies and a chest, so we might as well go ahead and take care of this area too. As we can see, we have birds, so we'll go ahead and put down a dispersal, uh, dispersal plant. And good idea to go ahead and get some shimmying in so that we can get our stamina up. If I can find the one that I just downed, there we go. That uh, shockwave is really helpful in this case, right? Yep. We'll go ahead and switch to uh, scatter shot. Put down another plant. Yeah. All right, and we're clear. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get back to our original objective. And here we can see kind of how the sky traversal thing, or maybe not sky traversal, but like running on these different platforms might work. You're just utilizing the zip to be able to pull you from point to point. If you're not far enough to get to a point, then just pull yourself to the edge of that rock. As long as you aim the zip well, you'll be able to get to any location uh, that you're trying to go for. So let's see where we're trying to go now. That is our objective, is that spot right there. So we'll just go ahead, drop on in, then zip to that location, and here oh, we are. this doesn't look good. Yes, something seems to have drawn the brake here. But I expect you can clear it away with your powers. Give it a try. So it looks like I'm just going to have to pretty much hit it. Yeah. Here 
comes. And so what the Monuments of Strength do is that they give permanent status benefits. So that's another objective. And now we're about to go ahead and get rid of the final objective. We will not be doing the boss monster, like the hidden boss monster in this uh, live stream. Because I want us to go ahead and get the other abilities first, really showcase the demo, finish it out, and then we'll do that final boss monster as kind of like a testament to everything, right? That'll be our, 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 fit, our going away presence for the demo. So we're going to save that until the end, but we will go ahead and get that last objective done right now. And so what I'm doing here is just utilizing her abilities to get us up this this area and there we go wasn't that difficult to climb that that's a Kalano so I know I need to switch to fire looks like that was the only one should we take so, a look that made that sure. straightforward as long as it's something good huh. Expect to get my guard broken like that. So yeah, the boggarts can be very, um, <laughs> very powerful given their the situation. So you need to watch out for those guys. They can definitely put down a lot of damage really quickly. Also, keep in mind when using Tendril, kind of like how I did there, you have to be careful with Tendril because I've realized that Tendril has a wait time. So you always have to keep that in mind if you're going to use it in a situation with a lot of enemies. Actually, I'm going to use Surge Magic. Finally. So we're good the with them. Here, huh? Were you hoping for a little exercise? <laughs> and so this is going to be the other area. Let me go ahead. What we're going to do is I'm going to save the game here. Um, reason being, and I'm going to be periodically doing this throughout our live stream, right? Certain areas where either A, it's very easy to die due to the difficulty, or B, there's going to be a nightmare section that we're going to get to, and we're going to have to make sure not to uh, kill the enemies before we're ready. All right. So here it's showing kind of what is a dodge roll, um, pretty much. So the dodge rolls are just dodging back out of spells and stuff. We've actually been doing this that whole time. So there we see the power of that daze technique, where you immediately lose almost all your stamina when you get hit by it from the harpies. are appearing so this becomes really complicated when this happens so I'm gonna go ahead and erect the crucible so at least if they start doing dash techniques then we have something we can do about that I'm also going to direct a, um, a plant so that, that way the disperse can help us 
And literally all I'm gonna do is let the Crucible do the work in terms of killing the majority of them. Get Tendril to knock some of them off of us. We won't be able to use Bind because they're in the air. So there's no point. I'm gonna have to shoot them out of the sky pretty much with just the scatter shot. Let me go ahead and get higher up. Ooh, got caught with acid. Not fun. Okay, we need to disperse back. So I'm getting dispersed yeah. back as quickly as possible. <clears throat> there we go. The vulture's out of the way. So now I can actually swap yeah. into using other abilities. Please tell me you're all right. So of course that ability oh. took out Cuff. So now I'm going to have to be able to just dodge with just lower stamina. I'll go ahead and direct the Crucible to protect me while I wait for stamina to replenish. Alright. And let's see who's left. And we're through. Boy, this is getting ridiculous. Find somewhere to rest. Mm -hmm. ah, this isn't over. All right. So now we'll go ahead and do leech. This one is honestly supposed to be attempted when you have a few more abilities to help you out, but we made it work. Now that we have enough magic, we can go ahead and start to work on strengthening some of the abilities that we have to in phrase section. All right, so this is one that's important is modify, but we'll come back for modify. We'll need to do a spellcraft challenge there, but let's go ahead and get our defense up. So we'll have screen from now on for when we get hit. I already have cut and run, so we won't worry about the rest of those for now. Let's see. What do we got here? So this is another cloak. Uh, this is the judicious cloak. We're not going to equip it, but this, of course, will complete objective five. So from here, what I'm going to go back and do is go from here to one of the refuges, the one that we just found. Again, the extra challenge, we're not gonna do that one just yet. Let me make sure that I've gotten everything in this area oh, before we leave it. Leg work for a change. Not something that braces a thing for All me. Right, let's grab that. Grab that ether, and then grab those bomb flax, and we'll just go in here and open this remaining chest. All right. And we're gonna make it use of that beautiful fast travel that we have. We might as well, I guess, walk up to this uh, Southern Belfry, just so that we can easily get out to this area in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and just sprint over here. Alright. So 
now we have this as a fast travel destination. Now we'll go ahead and fast travel all the way back over to the refuge that we found, which is this one over here. Again, instantaneous fast travel it is just beautiful. All right. Let's all right. This. So first step, actually, if we'll increase the materials pouch, then we'll do the healing draw. So the longer that you have to upgrade an item, the faster the wheel will spin in terms of uh, pretty much strengthening that item or, or working through it. So this is the new cloak that we have. This is the Judicious Cloak. But again, we won't be using that one. The important thing, though, is Judicious has the ability immune to dazing. So whenever you pick up a new ability on another cloak, you can then go back and put that ability on a cloak you previously owned. So now we can find immune to dazing right here, and we can actually put this one on our cloak. Now, if those harpies use that, that Kilano uses that, uh, that scream attack, it will do nothing to me. Right. And so from here, um, pretty much this has completed all of the objectives. So we've literally done what would be, I guess you could say the initial 100 percenting right now so that's already done uh for our journal and so now that we have those five objectives done the next thing to do will be to build out her entire character i'm going to complete everything in terms of skills on both sections here we're going to level everything up to full uh so that means doing all the spellcraft challenges and then finally we will go ahead and do the extra challenge at the end which will be to actually fight the powerful enemy quote unquote so for today i'll be wrapping up the stream here um thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll be picking up same time 6 p.m et tomorrow peace out and uh leave in the comments or the chat any questions you have about the demo i'd love to answer them peace